scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. That the saints can learn God, can know God. Number one is through scriptures. We learn the character and the principles of God in scripture. Number two, we can learn God through the names of Jesus that captured in every name of Jesus is a revelation of something about himself. Rapha in manifestation is not Sikenu. Sikenu in manifestation is not Jaira, although it is one and the same person. So we can learn God through his names. Number three, we can learn God by studying Jesus. The Bible calls him the express image of the invisible God. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophet. The Bible says verse 2 hath in this last day spoken to us by his son. So God speaks by his son whom he hath appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the world. Verse 3. The Bible says who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person upholding all things by the word of his power and then number four we can learn God through our experiences Job said I have heard of you with the hearing of the ears but now my eyes seeth you your experience can capture a rich dimension of God this is why testimonies are important they not only show us the results that have happened to the testifiers, they show us how else God can walk. If you do not hear the testimony of the saints, you will be limited by your understanding of how far God can go to see that his saints are glorified. But in the testimony of the testifiers, you, you will see how God is able to navigate through situations and you see a display of his power, his wisdom, his love and his authority over Satan and over situations and circumstances. Are we together? So the word of God helps us to know God. Number two, the word of God equips us to walk in victory. The word of God equips us to walk in victory. An excelling life is a product of knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. An excelling Christian life, please pay attention, is a product of knowledge exact knowledge my people it says even though they are my people they are destroyed for the lack of knowledge there is such a state a believer can assume called the lack of knowledge and it says my people there are things if you do not know as pertain longevity you may cut short your life in an untimely way there are things if you do not know about the blessing of the Lord upon the saints, you may live a miserable life even though saved, even though born again. There are things if you do not know about the Holy Spirit, you may rob yourself of an opportunity for a rich fellowship that translates to growth. There are things if you do not know about men, you may receive promises and visions and prophecies and yet your life remains grounded almost forever. Why do we come before God to learn? We come as a way of admitting our levels of ignorance, unashamedly, that when we come before him, we come opened and we say, Lord, I confess that I do not know so far. Help me. 
And the Bible says, blessed are the meek. There is a reward for them. They are the ones who inherit the earth. Why do we come before God? To correct our perceptions. Our perceptions. The Bible says, be careful so that what you call light be not darkness. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, the Bible says, but the end thereof is terrible that you can walk in error for a long time believing that what you are holding on to is light and then in the presence of greater light you will see the futility of what you had called light how do you know you are encountering god when your darkness is exposed to you when the areas of darkness are exposed you know that god is there so that you now can embrace light isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 it says, Arise, shine, for your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2, he asked Ezekiel to arise. And Ezekiel did not have the power to arise. Ezekiel chapter 2, please. From verse 1 and 2, he says, Son of man, stand up upon your feet and I will speak to you. Rise from that level. And he did not have the strength. And the Bible says, verse 2, the spirit entered into me. There is an energizing that comes when his word comes. The spirit of God hides in his word. The spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. We do not just stand because we are tired of sitting. We stand because there is an energizing that comes at the instance of his word. Why am I telling you this tonight? I want to cultivate in you a passion for specific spiritual knowledge. Can I submit to you? There are many kinds of spiritual information across the body of Christ that are completely useless as far as the excelling of the saints is concerned. The Bible says you shall know the truth. It is not knowledge that delivers you. It is the information, the correctness of the information you know. You can know a lie and it will not set you free. You are not ignorant. There is something in your mind, but the information is inaccurate. It matters that what you know is the truth. You can know an opinion. An opinion does not set free. You can know a generally accepted opinion. It is only the truth that makes free. How do you know it is the truth? By the liberating power it brings to your life. Any information that keeps you in bondage is not the truth. If it is the truth, it sustains within itself the ability to liberate you. Are we together? Jesus spake a parable to help believers. And it is called the parable of the sower. He spoke about four kinds of soils. Nothing was wrong with the sower. Nothing was wrong with the seed. Which the Bible refers to as the heart of man. Then the Bible says there were four kinds of soils that the seed was sown. On a rocky ground. By the wayside. On ponds. And then on good ground. And the Bible says the seed that falls on good ground are they that hear the word and understand it. What makes your ground good is understanding. What makes your ground barren is lack of understanding. And when Satan finds out that you do not have understanding, he comes immediately and he picks away that seed. Are we learning something tonight? Yes. So every time you come to church, don't carry a religious, a religious understanding. Oh, we're just coming to sing and let's hear what happens and let's see people fall down. No, 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 no. Come with intention. Rejoice while you are coming because you know that your notepad or your iPad or whatever device, you are going to leave writing something that makes you wiser, that makes you better. The assignment of the priest is to bring by the spirit life applicable truths not useless truths that just um, information that are uncoordinated and cannot produce exact results listen be 
tired of random information around your life without an ability to prove. Truth is only useful when you can connect it to the result it produces. Don't give me an ingredient I will not be needing in the meal I seek to prepare. If my assignment is to cook fried rice and you bring beautiful tubers of yam, I will keep them there. They are not relevant as far as what I intend to produce. There is the knowledge that puffs up and has no results attached to it. The Bible says that we receive with meekness the engrafted word. With meekness. A preparedness of heart. Are we together? You will be surprised at how easy it is to live a victorious life when you understand the systemic character of God. Understanding the systemic character of God is the key to living an excelling life. There is Jesus the way, the methodology of the kingdom. Jesus the way. He shows you the path that moves you from point A to point B. And you see, while he's teaching you, your life may carry a semblance of defeat and failure. Don't worry about your current state. Dr. Miles Monroe defines fact as the present state of things. The truth is the way it ought to be from the eyes of God. Fact can be deceptive. The fact may be that you may not be empowered financially as at, as at the moment. The fact can be that you are still experiencing some level of ill health. That is fact, the present state of things. But hallelujah, the Bible tells us that transitions are possible in this kingdom. It says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen, for the things that are seen are temporal. Temporal means subject to change under a certain condition. Not every condition, a certain condition. When you create the condition that sponsors change, change will happen. And the Bible tells us the condition for change as we behold him as in a mirror. The Bible says we are changed from glory to glory into the image that we are seeing. So whilst you are seated here, you are not just listening to a man preach. You are not just exhausting the time allocated for a church service. No, in the realm of the spirit, there is an ascendance happening to you. Truly, truly, there is an intellectual ascendance. There is a spiritual ascendance. You are, you are sustaining the ability to command results. Be patient with yourself and give yourself some time. Submit yourself. That's what the word baptism is from the Greek word baptizo. Immerse yourself into a body of truth. It says meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. And it leaves you with an assurance that your profiting will appear unto all. Nothing speaks at the beginning. It is always at the end that it speaks. So an attack on your prayer life, an attack on your, not just your word study life, an attack on your ability to listen is a real attack. You know, in a church service like this, the devil too tries to loiter around, deceiving people, distracting people. The word of God is coming from heaven to change, to build, to transform. And here comes the devil, the master of the flesh realm. Distracting with a phone call, distracting with some business idea, distracting with all kinds of things. And then we are lost and our word comes and does not find us. Jacob said, the Lord was in this place and I knew not. It is not only when hands are stretched and miracles begin to happen, people are falling under the anointing and the Holy Spirit is moving. No, he rides on the wings of his word. That sound that enters your ears is not sound that leaves the mic alone. As it leaves, there is an engracing. Many years ago, the Lord showed me a vision. You've heard me share it. In this vision, I saw a very big, like an ancient gate. And then that door, a door really, it had 
smaller doors. The vision zoomed to me and I saw smaller doors. And the doors were opening and closing, opening and closing. And for every door that opened, light would emanate from it. And I was wondering what this vision meant. And then the Lord began to speak to me. I saw scriptures written on every small door. And I learned by the speakings of the Spirit that for every revelation, there is an energizing, there is an anointing that backs every scripture you see. When that scripture opens up, the grace to defend it also comes. So the truths you know that you cannot defend has not yet become light to you. Ever learning, the Bible says, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Ever learning. This is why as ministers of the gospel, we must be apt to teach God's word. Because when people lend us their attention for an hour, two hours, three hours, it is evil, it is sin, it is wicked to just keep communicating opinions that are not life applicable. It is dangerous to keep believing and then find out that what you have believed is a lie. You see the reason why we pray. You see the reason why we worship. We cry unto him to show us mercy and grant grace that the light that comes from him will enter us with the purity with which it left heaven. Unadulterated by our ignorance. The ignorance of the vessel first. Something can leave God so pure and powerful and land upon a mind that is not transformed and nonsense will be communicated out of it to God's people. There are secrets in this kingdom. There is nobody. Many of us have houses and you have many rooms or chambers in your house. You don't bring a stranger into your living room. Do you do that? No. A stranger may just wait somewhere outside or at best maybe in your living room. But the more the relationship keeps growing, you can trust them and even take them to that holy of holies. The Bible says, the secret things of the Lord are with them that fear him. Listen, we excel in this kingdom on the strength of the secrets that we have and we hold. I have shared with you and let me recap on this. That when it has to do with the pursuit of God and the knowledge of God, even in heaven, we will continue to seek him and know him. There is no exhaustion. Are we together now? We will keep learning him and knowing him from glory to glory. But as far as living a victorious life is concerned, the reality of the divine life, the truths that you need are finite. They are not infinite. If you have the idea that the truths, the body of spiritual truth are located for your victory, are infinite, you are wrong. The truths that make wonders out of believers are finite. Like the course content of a student as you sojourn college. There is an exact course content. Learning does not stop. But you can know that the course content that makes for medicine and surgery. The course content that makes for architecture. You can exhaust it. And you are awarded a degree as proof that you have exhausted that body of knowledge. While learning continues, you can stand proud knowing that you've gone through that curriculum. That's how it is spiritually. You can handle these truths and know by the privilege of God's mercy and grace that when it comes to financial prosperity, I have found the key. When it comes to longevity, I have found the key. When it comes to shattering the power of darkness over my life and all around me, I have found the key. This is what is translated into dominion. Dominion. It's not an impartation. You've heard me say. Dominion is the resultant effect of your piecing together these truths. So when darkness comes, you have within you the spiritual arsenals to launch at darkness. When failure comes, you have within you the spiritual arsenal. This is what maturity in the spirit is about. Maturity in the spirit is not measured by how frequent you have gone to church. No, not necessarily. You can be in church for a very long time and yet you are not transformed by these truths. May the Lord grant us grace. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord grant us the capacity to maximize every moment we spend in his presence, in prayer, in worship, and when the word comes, embrace it. Allow the word to change you and you watch what your life becomes in the name of Jesus Christ. Very briefly, let me talk tonight about a subject that has not been understood in the body of Christ properly in my opinion I think that there has been a lot of confusion as far as understanding this subject is concerned I've heard people preach about this subject I've heard people make a lot of propositions many people have they have made known what can happen to a believer when you possess the understanding of this truth but not many people have been able to walk in light of it the grace of God please write it down and begin to pray in the spirit as the Lord grants us fire tonight that comes from heaven the grace of God is someone praying Oh, my life is about to change. Pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Two scriptures. Second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14. We are discussing the grace of God. Please read with me, believers. If you can see it projected ready one to read the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all amen one more time the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all amen scripture number two Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Find your strength. Find your audacity. Find your confidence. Find your security not just in your ability not just in your wisdom my son please keep the scripture he says be strong in the grace that is in christ jesus let's add one more scripture ephesians chapter 2 please from verse 8 to 9 our online family following from whatever television station and whatever online platform I want you to pay attention have something to write don't just listen you're not just watching a program God is coming to you to change your life get something to write settle down and understand it says for by grace are ye saved and that true faith it is not of yourselves it is the gift of God by grace are you saved by grace are you saved the subject of the grace of God is one that has been I will say it has been taught quite frequently in the body of Christ I think we've there, there's a there's a great sense of awareness the average believer understands that there is something he has an idea of something called the grace of God he may not fully understand the scope of it and how he works but at least he knows enough that whoever by any means seems to possess that attribute called the grace of God is empowered supernaturally to live a victorious life but many believers have not understood the scope of what the Bible calls grace nor the administration 
of that grace. This is my assignment tonight. To help us understand from scripture what the Bible refers to as grace. And then to help show us the dimensions of grace and by the spirit of God show us how to receive grace and the administration of grace. Are we blessed? The Bible is full of scriptures that talk about the grace of God. I just took a few of them. There are many others. Grace. Let's attempt to define grace. Let's attempt to define grace. Ephesians 1 verse 3. If you ask the average believer, please look up. And by this teaching, I do not intend to create any controversy or finger pointing. You have to be very careful. Every time you receive truths, there is no tell them, there is no say to them, there's no such thing in this house and should not be in the body of Christ. The truths that come are for your lifting. When you benefit from those truths, then you can extend the same in love to as many who are ignorant or not, not holistic about that concept. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible says, Ephesians 1 verse 3, please. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look up, please. It says, Who had blessed us with how many? All spiritual blessings. Everyone, please say after me, All spiritual blessings. In heavenly places, in Christ, this is the definition of grace. The grace of God is defined as the blessing of God. All spiritual blessings that reside in heavenly places in Christ is called grace. The first mistake I want to correct about our idea and the subject of grace is the very definition that has existed for a long time in the body of Christ. The average believer defines grace as unmerited access. That is not a lie, but it's not the whole truth. Just defining grace as unmerited access. I understand that grace is access, but it is not only access. I understand that there is a dimension of grace that is truly unmerited. But to believe that generically speaking, grace is unmerited access is a well-intentioned, well-meaning definition, but is completely inaccurate. The very definition is what sponsors irresponsibility in believers and now creates a, a laxity to press into the dimensions of grace are we together so the average believer says grace is unmerited and here's the idea if God wants to bless you God can just bless you he chooses whoever he wants to bless and in grace and if it so happens to be you then you receive it the moment it comes to your life doors just open people just help you mountains no no no. Even as limited as we are, we have more intelligence than that. The God of the universe will not design a system so flawed. So many people sit down and continue to confess grace and believe that they have grace and yet their lives don't move. Doors remain short. They remain mediocre. They fail and they don't make progress. They don't represent the purposes of God. To the degree that God intends. And after a while they begin to wonder themselves. What is wrong with my idea? The grace of God. So we have defined grace. I'm going to give you other definitions. But I need to establish a few things. The grace of God is not limited to access alone. No. No. And the grace of God is not entirely unmerited. That is an incorrect communication. The Bible does not teach that. It is only... Give us this scripture. 
First Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. Let me allow the Bible speaks for itself. The Bible says, but the God of all grace. Everybody say all grace. He never said the God of grace. He said the God of all grace now suggests immediately that grace is dimensional. The God of all grace, just like all wisdom, all grace means that it is dimensional. Is that true? Please sit down. There are largely two dimensions of grace. Not the only ones, but for our exegesis of scripture tonight, there are two dimensions of grace. Listen carefully. There is what we call in theology the saving grace the grace that saves are we together now there is the saving grace according to ephesians chapter 2 from verse 8 and 9 the grace that saves what is the character of this dimension of grace the the miracle that comes from that grace listen carefully the miracle that comes from that grace is not produced by the recipient the recipient is only a benefactor of that grace that miracle is called in theology the finished work of christ are we together now so when we talk about the saving grace we're talking about the grace that is imparted upon the believer number one to help you believe the gospel and then it is that grace that is upon you when you do receive what we call the finished work of Christ, the substitutionary sacrifice. Jesus Christ did everything alone on the cross as far as the price for sin is concerned. No man assisted him. Men assisted him to carry the cross, but the entire spiritual journey the transaction spiritually speaking he did it alone are we together the bible says it is not of works what works not just the, the works of the law number one that are unable to save you and then number two any effort to save yourself outside of what jesus has done on the cross is vain and is futile this is doctrine from scripture we are saved on account of the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ which he did alone his passion his death his burial his resurrection his ascension his enthronement was entirely done alone no human being sustains in himself the ability to save himself the mere fact that we did not create ourselves means that we are unable to save ourselves is that true only the creator sustains that ability to help his creation and jesus came as a representation of the love of the father please understand this i've taught you this here that the one of the major reasons why jesus came was as a representation of the love of the father to man and then creation he demonstrated the love of the father through his substitutionary sacrifice his death his burial and his resurrection so the saving grace is the grace that helps you to hear and believe that gospel if that grace is not upon you you will not believe that report you will hear it like many people hear it today and they harden their hearts and ignore it they say this is some christian nonsense but if that grace is upon you then you are caught to the heart that was the grace that came upon three thousand men on the day of pentecost the Bible says they were caught to the heart and they said men and brethren what shall we do he said repent for the remission of your sins and then you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you and to your children your children's children those who are afar off as many as the Lord will call saving grace but there is another dimension of grace called the enabling grace this grace does not get things done for you it empowers you so that even though the effort is being exerted by you but it is not in the strength of the flesh 
Are we together now? Watch this. A classic example of enabling grace is this mic I am holding. Who is doing the speaking? Who is doing the amplifying? Can I amplify my voice? But is this speaking? The potential of this mic is when I am in partnership with it speaking. The assignment is to make what I have released and amplify it beyond my effort. Are you getting the point now? This is the dimension of grace the body of Christ does not understand. And so here's what we do. God, your grace is able to lift me. God, your grace is able to bring destiny helpers. And God is saying, this is not how it works. The labor of the fool were yet every one of them. The grace that enables. This is what Apostle Peter was teaching. So when he says the God of all grace, the grace that saves and the grace that empowers. If I lay hands on someone who is on a wheelchair and the person gets up from that wheelchair, I do not have that power, but there is an engracing by the Spirit. Is that true? That person would not stand up just in his house like that. He had to come to the house of God. He had to release his faith. And the man of God had to minister to him. As you are sitting like this, God wants to touch you. God wants to bless you. But you will be surprised, even though he wants to touch you, he will keep quiet. As though he cannot do it. But he ministers to me now and I say the power of God is touching you. You begin to see it happen. It is not just when I started speaking that he wanted to do it. He's always wanted to do it. But if you do not know how the enabling grace works, you will keep waiting forever. If you're with me, say amen. amen. So the Bible lets us know that it is all grace. First Peter 5 verse 10. Let's hurry up please. First Peter 5 verse 10. Let's read together. Let me show you what grace does when it is entire. Are we together? Ready? One, two, read. But the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, number one, make you perfect. Number two, establish you number three strengthen you number four settle you all grace all grace all grace there is the grace that brings salvation it is saving grace but there is the grace that empowers the believer to walk in victory for instance, the grace that comes upon your prayer life, granting you the capacity to pray and to be diligent in prayer. If you don't pray, even if the grace is on you, it will be unfruitful because the grace depends on your participatory contribution. Now, when you are praying, you are not neglecting what Christ has done. You are taking advantage of what he has done and you are making use of it. Are we together? Now, watch this, please. If you want to take tea, you bring your milk, you bring your whatever beverage you are going to use, sugar or honey, whatever it is. Now, most of those beverages have been made already. You don't need to make it. Is that true? It's already there. But who does the mixing? As you mix it, it becomes tea. Even if the tea was made for you, you will have to turn it into a cup. And even if it's turned in the cup for you, you will have to pick it. Even if it's picked for you, you will have to put it in your mouth. Even if it's put in your mouth, you have to swallow it. There must be, if it must enter your system and profit you, there must be a participatory role. Now listen, the role that we play on account of what Christ has done, to make good what is finished in our life now in experience is what the Bible calls faith. Faith. The name given to the participatory role. 
Without faith, the potential of God's grace can never be experienced. The second error I would say respectfully that I may want to, with every sense of respect, correct in the body of Christ is the idea that the only thing you do, because there are people who have agreed that you have something to do, but the only thing people say to do is to repeat what God has said. Just repeat what God has said and it is done. It's not entirely true. No. Speaking is a fundamental law of faith that releases the grace of God, but not the only thing. If all you do is to keep saying, I am blessed and I am lifted, I go from glory to glory, in truth you will not go down. Your speaking will allow the Holy Spirit come to honor what you have, saying, you, have, you have said by showing you what else to do. Are you seeing now? There are many people who do not know what to do over their finances. They just declare, I will never be poor. You are not lying, but you will be very limited. There are people who doors have refused to open for them and they just say, all I know is that I'm not going to remain down. You are right. The Bible says the righteousness that is of faith speaks on this wise. But speaking is not the only thing. We didn't see Abraham speaking alone. The Bible tells us that Abraham is our portrait of how to maximize grace that comes from God through faith. Is that true? Isaiah 51, I think, from verse 1 and 2. Look unto Abraham your father, he says. Understudy Abraham. Verse 2 now. Look unto Abraham your father and to Sarah that body for I called him alone and blessed him and I increased him that means study Abraham's life what happened to Abraham when God called him there was a conversation between Abraham and God so we see speaking but that was not the only thing that made him a benefactor of the promise we see obedience we see the endurance of patience is that true The God of all grace perfect you, establish you, strengthen you, settle you. Let's define grace. What is the grace of God? Number one, I wrote here and I want you to listen carefully to this definition before you write. I said here that the grace of God is a state of consciousness. The grace of God is a disposition of understanding of the limitless provisions and the possibilities that are contained in God but only accessed through the office of the Christ. This is grace. The first definition of grace is that it is a disposition of understanding. It is a consciousness of the limitless provisions the vastness of God's power the vastness of God's blessings all that makes God God is called grace grace is like a warehouse that contains the entire riches of heaven the entire riches that are contained in God that warehouse the consciousness of the existence of such a possibility is grace Listen, none of us here is struggling to breathe in and out. Do you know why? It is not only because your nose can take in air and bring out air. It is because there is a consciousness in you that there is a limitless abundance. The moment you are aware that the air here is limited, we are going to have bitterness, we are going to have jealousy. Everybody will try to protect his portion of air. If you bring your nose near someone's, someone's circumference of air, the person says go away because there is an awareness of limitation there has to be an awareness in the saints of the vastness of the riches of Christ that the reason why God is lifting another is not why another is down that everybody can equally excel and rise and thrive and God still remains full are we together now if you have that understanding please listen you have to learn this if you have that understanding of the vast riches the grace of god a consciousness 
a disposition of understanding that when it has to do with the healing power of God is unlimited. When it has to do with passion, supplying passion, just because God has given me a grace to love him, he can give another person and another person and another person. When you know this, the doctrine of superstar Christianity is unnecessary because the same Lord can be rich unto how many? as much as there is the election of grace as we call it but i'm telling you everyone can press into the fullness of the dimensions of christ all of us seated here can prosper all of us seated here can know god and love god with such passion every one of us here can be a custodian of a dimension of god's anointing every one of us can make advancement and yet god is still saying who is left in as much as everyone has received that our partaking of this does not deplete him please pay attention it is because we understand the vastness of god's grace that we can give freely without withholding if you are not aware of this consciousness it will be difficult for you to give freely imagine if for every one naira or one dollar that goes out of your account ten naira comes will you be greedy confess but because you know that if I take ten naira it goes down 100 naira it goes down I say no i've tried that's gone down I, I won't i won't do that to myself but imagine if there is a system that makes it to continue multiplying this is this is why god is a giver he gives because there is no depletion in his economy you have to understand this this is the revelation of grace that you must have the all surpassing riches of christ the Bible calls it spiritual blessings. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Spiritual blessings in heavenly places. But, now let me tell you this. There are many other kinds of spiritual blessings. But this one we are talking about. If it is the grace of God, you can never access it negating Christ. Jesus Christ is the only door that leads to receiving genuine grace. Are you seeing now? Because there are many people that try to rout the grace of God and they take Jesus out of the equation. No. The Bible says every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. The office of the Christ is the only office by which men can access genuine grace that comes from God. It's called the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So anyone who truly desires that grace, you don't just reach for the grace ignoring Jesus. He is the door that leads to that grace. Are you seeing that now? Do you know why this is important? You'll be learning something I will share with you a bit, a bit after now. When people see the dexterity of this grace upon your life, chances are that they will bypass Jesus and yet want the grace. You have to be able to defend how this grace came. Because men will tell you, look, I don't love Jesus. I'm not interested in him. If it's wisdom, if it's this, pray for me. And you tell him, look, the administration of this grace demands that you must come through the door. The door means the authorized channel. If a, if a visitor follows the window and enters your house, he's in your house, but is he welcome? What do you call such a person? A thief. A thief is a visitor, but he's unwelcome and unneeded. If we do not understand the concept of grace accurately, many people will continue to boast in the flesh and Jesus will eventually be out of the picture. If it is genuine grace, you cannot take Jesus out of the picture. No, he remains at the epicenter of everything grace. Is God speaking to us? So the grace of God referred to the entire bank of God's riches and God's blessings. Salvation being the first but not the only. Salvation being the first but not the only. Let's attempt to list the rest. Mercy, 
deliverance, favor, speed. All these possibilities are captured in that bank called grace. Mercy is grace. Faith is grace. Deliverance is grace. Anointing is grace. Provided it came from God through Christ to you. The spiritual name is grace. Please, do, do, do we have this understanding now? Yes. So when we say it is the grace of God, you are right. How did you do this kind of thing? How did you build this? It is the grace of God. What you mean is that the possibilities that I'm enjoying came from this spiritual reservoir. It came through Christ to me. And now I am enjoying it. The grace of God. The second definition of grace, very quickly. The second definition of grace, which is equally useful for our teaching tonight, is the empowerment. The spiritual empowerment or enablement. Write it down, please. The spiritual empowerment or the enablement that results from this consciousness. What consciousness? The consciousness that God is infinitely limitless. The consciousness that everything I ever need for life and godliness is in Christ. When you have that consciousness that God is a giver and that this God and this kingdom that we so talk and boast about is a compendium of infinite possibilities. When you understand this, there is an empowerment that comes from that consciousness. The name of that empowerment and that enablement is called grace. Mm. So if I believe that in Christ healing is possible, there is an empowerment that comes based on that consciousness. Are we together? If I believe that it is true, God prospers, there is an empowerment. The assignment of that empowerment is to bring you into the experience of what you have believed. Listen carefully. The assignment of that empowerment that we call grace, grace as an enablement, grace as help, grace as empowerment has the assignment to bring you into the experience of the things you have believed. So if I believe that God is a lifter, is it true from scripture? Yes. Has he lifted people from scripture? Yes. By having that consciousness that God is a lifter, the grace for lifting comes to my life in honor. It comes to honor the fact that I believe that dimension of God. And let me tell you this, when that empowerment comes, because grace can teach, it begins to open me up to the participatory dynamics that make for lifting. So I find myself operating at a frequency of wisdom that mere human beings would not be able to have. The wisdom emanates from that empowerment. If I believe that God can make ordinary men powerful, I believe that because it is true from scripture. That grace that anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon me and I'm able to prove it here and now with my life that God empowers people. So I can speak to someone and say by tomorrow, return lifted and the person just leaves believing that it was just a word that came on him. And by the next day, that word that came on him will start drawing destiny helpers, will start making him act in a certain way until prophecy comes to pass. Is called the enabling grace. Are we together now? If I pray for you and I say in the name of Jesus, the prophetic or apostolic or pastoral calling upon your life, let it be fanned to flames. If you believe what I have said, the grace that empowers you will come on you. It is that grace that will start planting an appetite for prayer. Because in any case, without prayer, you will not grow. In any case, without word study, you will not grow. But the empowerment to do it does not come from you. The will to do it and the discipline to do it comes from you. But the empowerment to do six hours, three hours is not your strength. Are we learning? So, look up. It is true that the grace of God looks like you are not doing anything. 
But that is not entirely true. The grace of God grants you salvation so that you are in Christ. That becomes your legitimate ground for receiving every other thing. The moment the saving grace is administered to you, what is the assignment of the saving grace? It helps you believe the gospel. Without the saving grace at work in your life, you cannot believe the gospel. The saving grace helps you to, to believe the gospel. And then it is responsible for the impartation of Zoe, God's life. From that time onwards, the level of grace that is at work in you is called the enabling grace. The grace that empowers you. The energy is supernatural, but the doing is still you. So, I pick up my Bible by the Spirit of God and I begin to study. Ordinarily, I should not find anything. Ordinarily speaking, I should not see anything that culminates to revelation. Except that I'm not just reading it in the flesh. What does it mean to read in the flesh? By your efforts. Only engaging your sensory perceptions. Now, whilst I'm reading the Holy Ghost, you see that now. He comes and breathes upon me by that grace he has given me. And suddenly, I just turn to a scripture. I just feel like going online to type something. And you find one scripture. Then you see a 19 minute message or a 21 minute message. You had no business going there. But there was a grace. It was responding to your participatory. You see that now. You were participating with that grace. That 19 minute video video leads you to a link leads you to a website now you have found truth and you kneel down there crying how did these people know that this is what I was looking for grace 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 God knows that the call upon your life will require stretching and mentorship and discipline and so whilst you are praying and say God show me mercy all of a sudden you feel led to go to the market but why should i go to the market after the rain whilst you are in that market then you will see a poster that poster leads you to a crusade that leads you to a church that leads you to the answer to your prayer that is grace it was grace moving you all the way but you cooperated with that grace that's why you are seeing the potential you would have ignored it and the grace will still remain there listen did you know in 2 Kings chapter 4, the oil had the ability to solve that woman's problem. But the oil could not multiply itself on its own. There was something she had to do to release the potential of that oil. What was her assignment? Increase the vessel. When she came to the prophet, the prophet said, you are a prophet's wife? No, this is not how God works. You are sure you are a prophet's wife? Yes, sir. My husband is late. He said, no, there must be something in your house. What do you have? Said nothing. He said, no. Check. I said, oh, oil. And the oil was listening to the conversation. And said, for years I have been here. You don't know what would have happened to your life. You never would have tasted of poverty if you had recognized that I am here waiting for your participation. As soon as the prophet gave her counsel, he said, I know where the problem is. You have been waiting for the oil to find its way to fill vessels. You, go and borrow vessel. Don't borrow oil, but go and borrow vessel. Whatever it will take you, you can plead with your neighbor, help me. Don't be ashamed. Go and outsource these things. And when she came, listen carefully, listen. He said, now that you have it, shut your door and begin to pour. And the oil said, now that you have done your part, watch and see that this was no ordinary oil so God gives you your finances and in your dreams you're having visions of you thriving and yet you are going down because the grace has been waiting but there is no knowledge to know what to do with that grace you see that faith is not acting faith is acting based on the conditions tied to the promise there is always a condition. You don't choose what to do. You find out what you are supposed to do. 
Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. The Bible says to observe and to do all his commandments which I command you this day. It says that the Lord will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Every time God speaks, the grace to make what he said come to pass starts hovering around the vicinity where that word was spoken but the grace keeps waiting there who can believe that word and find out the condition that makes for the activation of that grace listen when it was time for Jesus to come upon the earth there was an engracing that came by the Holy Spirit waiting for that virgin in this case Mary if Mary refused and said thank you for all this your story uh, Gabriel go back to heaven and tell God I'm not stupid he would have respected her will and the word alongside the grace would have looked for another person but here's what Mary said be it unto me according to your word the moment that happened the grace called the power of the highest that overshadows how shall these things be she asks an honest question I'm willing to cooperate but can a woman give birth without a man and Gabriel said leave the rest just understand your own part is your own part is to agree God is not a demon he will not force a baby inside your womb and she said be it unto me the same way I hope you know that she had a responsibility of carrying that baby for nine months. And can I tell you honestly, I believe that she went through the normal things women go through when they are pregnant. Don't you think she was smiling every day carrying a heavy Jesus? No. There were times she felt this Jesus. I, they told me you are the king of kings. You are inside my stomach. I am tired. But her will kept playing the role. When it was time, she would have refused and said, you are not coming out. You will know now that you are inside my stomach. She had to cooperate. Now, are, are, we, are we together now? Yes. Why didn't Jesus just jump out one morning and say, thank you. I was only waiting to be nine months. He had to subscribe to the process of delivery when she gave birth. Why am I teaching you this? Please place value on what I'm teaching you. By the privilege of God's grace, this man standing before you, I'm not in ignorance over what I'm saying. I understand this thing. Many believers continue to live defeated lives in this kingdom because they do not understand the character of this enabling grace. The effort, the empowerment does not come from you but the action of obedience comes from you and until that action is taken the grace remains futile so god speaks to you and tells you you are going to be a ceo you will build a foundation that will go around the globe the moment you believe him listen carefully the grace starts hanging around your vicinity but it doesn't mean anything is built you will keep seeing visions till you get old if you remain like that the day you now say listen the day you now say, I believe, let me start making efforts. Let me go and buy a book on building a business. You are now cooperating with that grace. A book that ordinarily you shouldn't have understood. He will empower your mind and you will start understanding. And whilst you are reading, you will find a phone number. You will come for koinonia like this. And that grace will shift you to sit down near somebody who has a foundation. And then you will see something written, so, so, so foundation. And you say, wow, this is amazing. You run a foundation. You say, I've been running this for 26 years. And the Holy Spirit will say, you see now, that is the person I wanted you to come to meet. Now you partner with that person. Watch grace at work. And the person says, okay, I will call someone in UK to help you. A connection is coming. It is not your wisdom. That's why at the end of it, when you stand in front of that edifice, if they ask you how did it happen, you will say grace. Because the dynamics, 
But I'm telling you, if you sat down at home there, you will be very surprised that that grace will not work. Look at me. There are many, many people who have not taken advantage of this grace. There are many men and women of God who want to rise to positions of influence. They want to be great. They want to carry power. But they just say, in Jesus' name, I won't be small. And they are surprised that they remain small as if God did not hear them. Let me tell you what the problem is. Here is the problem. You do not understand that this grace is activated through knowledge that leads to obedience and it is at the point of your obedience that the potential of that grace is released. It is at the point of obedience. Listen to me. Faith is not saying what God has said. Faith is doing what God has said. You can start by saying homologio, confession, repeat as you have heard, but it should not stop there. So, come Dave. God tells this man, I want to lift you as a worshiper and take you to the nations of the earth. Whether it comes by prophecy or it comes by a scripture that is found. He can decide to say, God, you have given me a word. I'm going to the nations and he will sit down there. The day he goes to get a guitar or a keyboard, he is now participating with that grace. Are you seeing now? You go to the market as you are saving. Heaven is watching you. He buys a guitar, whether he can play it or not. Buys a keyboard. And the moment you do that, you have shown God that you are interested. He will now lead you to the person who will teach you. You see, you see him walking with you. I believe that God has called me to serve his purposes in the capacity that I serve. And I thank God for it. But sitting down to fold my arms and say the grace of God is at work in my life, I will be surprised till tomorrow. Let me show you a scripture. <sighs> Grant us grace, O oh Lord. Grant us grace. Grant us wisdom. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10. I want us to read it as loud as we can when we see it. 1 Corinthians 15, media help us, verse 10. Everyone, please read if you are a child of God and you believe in Jesus. Ready? One to read. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Stop. 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 How do we become in this kingdom? By the grace of God. For by the grace of God, I am this politician that I am. For by the grace of God, I am this man of God that I am. By the grace of God, I am this CEO, this billionaire. By the grace of God, I am this that I am. But here is this. He says, and his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. Stop. Hmm. So we're, we're examining three things now. The first is that the summary is that it is grace. But hey, so that you don't carry this confusion, hold on. Let me explain to you. That grace can be wasted. Let me show you how to waste it. To sit down and fold your arms, believing that everything is all right. It's called making the grace of God. Please keep the scripture there in vain. How did I maximize that grace? Next expression. Everyone read. One to read. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Stop. Don't rush. Don't rush. So number one, I am what I am by the grace of God. Number two, the grace came upon me, but the grace did not meet ignorance. The grace met me laboring. The labor dimension of faith the grace met me looking around for a shop. The grace met me learning how to start the business. 
the grace came upon me and I did not sit down. You are going to start a school. The grace met me going around Abuja and understudying schools as proof that I believe what God said. God told me I will become a grace man of God. The grace met you going to men of God who represent your future and listening and learning. He says, I labored more than you all. The higher the tenacity of your participatory corporation, the higher the grace walks and speaks in your life. Grace is not a license for laziness. Hear me, believers. Grace is not a license for laziness. Grace is a system of advantage that we labor circumspectly because we are empowered by the Spirit. It takes effort to pray. It takes effort to study the Word. It takes the audacity of faith to remain in the presence of failure and continue because God said so. The Bible says when you find yourself participating that way, then grace can speak for you. Are we together? Grace. It says, yet not I, but the grace of God. That means it was not by my energy. In as much as you found me as Paul praying, in as much as you found me studying, in as much as you found me preaching the gospel, regardless the persecution, there was an energizing within me that was more than me. Brothers and sisters, please hear me. I beg you and I beseech you in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, to understand what I am teaching you. Otherwise, your Christian experience will be so frustrated. Apostle, ah, God has shown you grace. You are right. But please explain to me what you mean. If you mean that I sat down quietly, grace does not work like that. The grace that saves is loitering around here. But there are people, if you die now without Jesus, you are going straight to hell. Bishop David Oyedepo will say, any Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life is an irresponsible Christianity. There must always be something. Now, let me tell you what it means to walk in the flesh. To walk in the flesh means to depend on your effort. To walk in the flesh means to believe that it is absolutely because of what you have done. You do not need God. It is because of my human connection, my wisdom. It is because of this. Uh -uh. The compassion of the Father was at the mercy of the sacrifice of Jesus. If Jesus did not endure, listen to me. When the nails hit the hand of Jesus, he didn't keep quiet and say, finish it, let me die. I'm the Savior. He felt the pain. Let me show you how. And met the sacrifice of his son. That's what produced grace. Love and a participatory effort. There are many of us looking at me. The grace of God keeps hovering around you. Bringing open doors. That an inaccurate spiritual understanding continues to close. Let me tell you what many of us are doing. This illusion that we have, one day go better, is a slang that we use in Nigeria and parts of Africa to mean one day arbitrarily, without any effort or contribution on your own part, things will change. Is a joke, joke multiplied. God has called me to be a visionary politician. Obtain grace from God and sit in your office in the night. Begin to strategize how to rise to that position. As you are strategizing, the Spirit of God is seeing your diligence and the engracing of God is coming to empower you. Hear me? Some of you need to politely go back home and call your family and say, I now find out why we keep praying and doors keep closing. Because there is something to do to rise. There are people who God will speak to and say, tomorrow you will be a director of an institute there. 
But the director requires you have at least a master's or a PhD or become a professor. If you obtain grace and go to school, you are participating with that grace to rise to that position of influence. It will not come and meet you at that state because that industry requires that degree of qualification. So training, diligence, studies, knowledge are all our participatory efforts to make good the grace of God. Let me submit to you, and I say this sincerely by the God of my salvation. Every night, including today, as tired as I am, when I just returned from Lagos, you know that? I've been to Abel Kuta, from Abel Kuta, the men's conference, Foursquare, to Lagos, and back straight here. And after this, there will be people to see, and after all, it doesn't matter what time, as a principle and as a discipline, I must listen to this message this night myself before I sleep. Don't covet people's crowns until you find out the sacrifice that those crowns are standing on. Oh, you are just lucky. It's just God's grace. Business people, hear me. This may be the Holy Spirit speaking to you. I know I will prosper. Oil and gas. I know I will prosper. Banking. God showed me you are right. But believe me, remaining at that state will only frustrate you and bring reproach to your life. These signs shall follow them. Follow means you are moving. Follow means you are taking steps. The grace of God to empower Esther to receive favor was there. But if Esther sat down, she would not find favor with the king. She said, you know what? I need to see this king. My people are about to die. I believe I'm favored. So I'm going to see him. If I perish, I perish. Listen. Now, I'm not encouraging you to be a hustler. That thing we call hustle, blindly trying to make things work. Don't do that. But have you noticed that people who don't give up never end up in shame for some reason? Have you seen people like that? They may not even be very serious believers. As soon as one door closes, they have no time to mourn. They force another one to open. They are losing their job. They grieve for two hours and they are up with their CV again. They have an e-version. They have their bag with the, 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 the CV. Any version you want, they are prepared. There are people like that. Are you into real estate? They will say yes. In two nights, they will read about real estate more than people who have been in it in 10 years because they will not let that opportunity go. Sooner or later, my brothers and sisters, you will be surprised to find out that something will work. I'm not just marketing flesh. I'm teaching you how the grace of God works. Hear me. There are many of you for a long time God has shown you that there are mantles. There are anointings. You've had dreams. You've had visions. Let me see what you are doing as proof that you believe what God showed you. For many of us, this is what we are doing. We are folding our arms. Oh, one day the fathers will die and it will be our turn. What sort of thinking is that? Oh, I know. Don't laugh at me. I know one day I will rise. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. I know God will prosper me. Show me the books you bought in honor of that word. Show me the uncommon mentors you are pursuing in the area of finances with proven results as proof that you believe you are a kingdom financier. Found out, respectfully speaking, that if the body of Christ does not learn the labor dimension of faith, we will continue to mock ourselves, jumping at confessions that will indefinitely remain in the realm of the spirit. Not inaccurate, but that lack of balance and completion is where our frustrations lie. Joshua, there is a grace for victory upon you, but it will not be without any effort from you. 
you are going to go around. You don't have the power to fight, but there must be a token of contribution from you. Get the priests. Go around. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea. They won. It's like going around Abuja, I told you. Don't think it was just a small room they went around. Going around Jericho was hard work. They did it for seven days. And he said, now, on the last day that you want to see the biggest blessings, you will do what you have done every day on that day alone, seven times. Now, man, I release a grace upon you for wellness. But go and look for a river. Dirty. Bath there. Naaman was saying, what sort of thing? You are insulting my pedigree. Say, okay, you can remain with your leprosy. But if it is God, you want to see cure you, go and bath. Naaman dipped himself once, came out looking like a child playing in mud. He was not healed. Dipped himself again, came out the second time. Even the sixth time, nothing happened. But when he went the seventh time, that grace in the water there. And as soon as he came out, the Bible says his skin was like that of a child. What of blind Bartimaeus? What of the man that did beautiful? Acts chapter 3, I believe. The Bible says it was the hour of prayer. Listen very carefully. The man was begging for arms. Peter and John went to pray. And then when they saw him, what do you want? I want arms silver and gold he said i have none but such as i have there is a grace he gave us i give unto you in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk the man remained on the ground there don't think he just jumped up no he remained on the ground there verse 7 hear what peter said for as long as you are remaining there this grace would not work let me help you hold my hands and he moved him the bible says and as he lifted him immediately his feet and his ankle bone received strength not when he was sitting at the instance of his participatory role that grace came upon him brothers and sisters please hear me it will never happen sitting down rest does not mean lack of efforts Rest means dependence on God. God's idea of rest does not mean leaving anything and sitting down there. No. Rest means that your dependence, the energizing and the empowerment. Remember when there were few automatic cars. Cars that use automatic gear. You have to put the manual gear, remember? From four you come back to three to two one and then four three two one and your hand is almost as if it's removing but now you have an automatic gear system but who holds the steering there is a system that keeps changing gears but you leave the steering and hold your hand and close your eyes and almost immediately you end your life but by holding on to the steering listen to me the advantage of the automatic gear system is to give you more room to focus and to provide convenience. So people can drive while they are talking and they are just driving while they are talking. It would not be, it would not be possible with the manual system just like that. This is how grace works. Grace does not drive the car for you. It helps you to engage the gear system so that whilst you hold it and it also empowers you and gives you the strength, my brothers and my sisters, obtain grace from God today. Find out what you need to do about your destiny. Rise up knowing that I have the backing of heaven. Open fire towards your destiny. And in one month, you will do more than you have done in 10 years put together. Then you will come and stand here. And when we say, how did it happen? You will say the grace of God. And we will know what you are saying. Apostle, I want to be anointed. God will anoint me, I know. is my God. You are right. But that's not how it works. 
there are keys to the anointing when you sit down and you are learning and you are studying while others are sleeping you are maximizing grace when you are listening to uncommon mentors help you and show you the way it works you are maximizing grace every participatory effort that you put knowing that I'm not putting this effort in the flesh I am maximizing grace this is why there are certain people who continue to triumph from one level of victory to the other whereas there are many spectators who sit down and hope that things will happen the grace of God an enabler a divine help if I think I engage my mind but I don't have the power to give myself ideas the grace can bring ideas while my mind like a womb receives them and births them so if you ask me how did the idea come I will say the grace of God but the idea came and manifested because my mind was fruitful to it when God sent me to this city by the grace of God and with every sense of humility I knew that his grace and his name was there to back me but if I sat down I folded my arms and I know I, I, one day it will happen don't worry you will be blessed tomorrow would come and even next tomorrow and nothing would ever happen but that effort in faith from one step to another step to another step his grace leading you his grace guiding you oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you i will seek you in the morning i have learned to walk in your ways for step by step you lead me and i will follow you all of my days Apostle, I don't know why I have favor, but people run away from me. You are right. You have been wasting that grace because you have not studied about relationships. The grace comes upon you, but your ignorance as to know how to relate with the world of men keeps aborting and destroying that grace. The day you submit yourself to learning how to live in the world of men, you take advantage of that grace. Now you are ready to excel. Now you are ready to excel. A gentleman years ago will soon pray. He heard my teaching. I did a teaching on finances. And when he listened to it, he had a little fashion outfit just to sew. And when he listened, he was full of incompetence and was just giving all kinds of excuses. He will measure you and sew clothes that twice your neck will enter inside. It, carelessness. And it didn't matter to him. And when he listened, and in, in it I spoke about diligence, he made up his mind. He submitted himself for one year to learning and mastery. Receiving the blessings that came from God's servant week in, week out. At the end of it, listen very carefully. At the end of it, that gentleman grew to a level of competence. He now, his goal and his prayer was that one day he would also include me among his clients that he would be sowing for and he believed that he was called to do it but not that version of him and he worked on himself for one year and he sowed something then in Zaria he carried it and brought it many people used to sow and bring clothes as seeds and for some reason I was restless early in the morning i said let me check out what this guy did I'm, so I said, I'm sure all these people who have sown a lot of things god bless them but i may not be able to use it but when i saw his finishing i saw what he did 
I asked the protocol. I said, look for this guy. Let him see me before he leaves. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the beginning of open doors for that gentleman. The rest is history. History that is worth knowing, but it is history. Oh, David, it is true that one day you will kill Goliath. But if all you do is sit down in the bush staring at animals, Goliath will kill you as if God did not call you. Are we together? Yes, sir. When David was killing the bear, when David was killing the lion, the grace for leadership was supervising him, watching him. And when the moment came, he came and stood before Goliath and he said, I've rehearsed well. Goliath said, am I a dog? He said, Goliath, be careful. You don't know what I've been doing preparing for this day. I am what I am by the grace of God. But the grace, I did not waste it in that I labored. I labored. In prayer, I labored in diligence. Nigerians, let's return to a point where we find dignity in labor and let's see it as part of faith as, an, as a participatory role to obtain and maximize grace. Arbitrarily leaving things to just walk like that. Arbitrarily waiting that one day we'll become exceptional politicians with no effort on our part. Exceptional businessmen doing business with nations. Exceptional men of God mentoring kings and speaking to nations just because God called you. I apologize but that may never happen. This is not how the kingdom works. Therefore, you must obtain grace tonight to go back and say, Lord, what have you told me? And what participatory role do I have to play in diligence? While you are crying, you still believe I'm a carrier of that grace. And it's working for me. God has called you into the music ministry. Sit down and pray in tongues until songs start coming from heaven. When they come, write them. You are maximizing grace. The first song, you will sing it and like it alone. Don't be discouraged. Keep writing. Are we together? Yes. You believe God has called you into business. You will go full of grace and be surprised that you will fail woefully. Don't worry. There is a difference between failure as a person and failure as an event. Give God glory for the lesson you are learning now because it will give you the audacity to mentor others tomorrow. So continue learning and going. And whilst you take that step from one connection to another connection, to one sermon, to one program, to one destiny helper, to one revelation, to one impartation, you find out that your life now begins to make sense. Something is adding up. Something is adding up. I desired certain levels of the anointing in my life. I saw in dreams and visions that I was walking in it. It would be a joke those days to just gather people and say, I wanted people for, on wheelchairs and crutches. Ah, no. But I knew. And I said, just sitting down to say, God, one day you will bless me. Uh -uh. I started looking for healing evangelists around the world, dead and alive. I began to study their convictions and their contemplations. What did God tell them? And let me tell you this, by the privilege of God's grace, we who God has helped to be successful a bit and we are still growing in the area of success, let's be sincere when we mentor people. Don't just arbitrarily tell them is the grace of God like that. When it has to do with mentorship, open them to your scars. Let them know the dynamics, the way you participated with that grace to make it happen. Tell them you prayed for 10 hours. Not as an effort on your own, but that you were taking advantage of the grace. Tell them you fasted. Tell them there were times you were disappointed in meetings. Be open with them. Tell them you forgot your message one day. And that was when you knew that the spirit of revelation was real. Be sincere with them. For as long 
as we keep blaming people for our lives including God God you are there you are watching my life you are watching my family God is saying my love and my kindness is not in doubt I have given you everything he that did not spare his son I didn't spare Jesus will I withhold anything from you you are aborting misusing and abusing the grace of God I keep enabling you and you do not act in keeping with the conditions that are required by scripture to make that grace come to pass so from tonight make up your mind that my life must command results make up your mind it is not all on to, up to God and it is not all up to you let me round up by saying this and then we pray when the prodigal son left his father and went around he was roaming around with pigs eating from pigs here's what he said i will arise what did he want he wanted to enjoy that grace again that opportunity it was a house with limitless abundance but he left it and he began to deplete he said i will arise i don't have the power to restore myself but i have the power to meet my father I can make efforts to meet my father and as he was making that decision concurrently his father said let me meet my son let me keep going peradventure I will meet my son somewhere there was a meeting point he did not meet him at his place of rest and he did not meet him in the house he met him at the place of obedience it's a risk I'm taking what if my father throws me away it's a risk I'm taking. And while I'm going, I'm rehearsing what I will tell him. Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of the slaves. But at least let me make the efforts. I am going. If he drives me away, I will return back with honor. I will say, God, at least you've seen that I've made efforts. When the father saw him, the first thing the father did was to embrace him and said your obedience has spoken volumes you don't need to tell me more i already know the story the fact that you understood and discerned enough to leave that point not minding the shame people look at him and say this guy whose father was wealthy what a useless boy enduring the ridicule to keep moving was already enough and um, the moment the father met him the bible says he put back that ring that symbol of honor sent him to the house held a party for him and while that was happening the elder brother was now angry and the elder brother said so what about me i have been in this house and he said you want to make the mistake of this person now everything i have is yours it's just that you don't know what to do all you needed to do was to ask me as your father you do not have the consciousness of my fatherhood to request that I will give you a lamb will I not honor you for your obedience and your staying there is nothing that God cannot do but fold in your arms to say Lord I know there is nothing you can not do it's true but I'm showing you the dynamics of the administration of grace let's read that scripture again 1st Corinthians 15 10 we're wrapping up 15 10 1st Corinthians 15 10 Please help us, media. But by the grace of God, Joshua Selman, you are what you are. Everything you will ever be is a product of God's grace. You are right, but don't stop there. Paul did not stop there. He says, and his grace, which was given to me, already given, was not in vain. I participated with that grace in that I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
the love of God, the fellowship, the communion of the Holy Spirit. It will only be with you if you are interested. It will only remain with you if you are ready to receive it. Anything God says you should receive, you can reject it. It does not end up in just confession. It does not end up in waiting for God to do. You have engraced me. Empower me, therefore, to take not steps that I want, steps that are required as demanded by the result I intend to see. Please rise up on your side. Your grace, your grace, I'm nothing without you. Your grace, your grace shines on me, shines on me, shines on me. I'm everything with you, shines on me, shines on me, it's your grace. Listen, whilst you're standing, I want you to begin to see with the eyes of your spirit the next level of your Christian experience, the next level of your business, the next level of your family, the next level of your finances. See it because in Christ is a possibility. See it because in Christ you have access. Your assignment is to turn access into experience. Your assignment is to partner with the grace of God through the ministry of the Holy Spirit to make access become experience. You may have a billion dollars in your card, but if you do not know how to re to use your ATM card or make withdrawals, you can sit down and be dying of hunger and thirst, whereas you have so much. This is how it is in the kingdom. I want you to see with the eyes of your spirit. You are in ministry. I would like you to see how limitless you can be in Christ. Not for the sake of gratifying the flesh, that you can do so much for his majesty. You are in business. You are a politician. I like you to see yourself becoming what God has said. There is no limit, I'm telling you, to what you can be. I believe God, I believe you, I believe you, I believe you. The abundance of your grace. Hallelujah. 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 This is my philosophy. I walk with the consciousness that there is space for me in destiny. There is no devil in existence from any nation and any region that will edge you out of your space in destiny. But just knowing it is there does not take you there. It was Sir Isaac Newton that stated his laws of motion in his study on mechanics and he stated one of the laws. He said, everybody remains in a state of uniform motion or rest. It will remain there except compelled by an external force to act otherwise. He was so right. He was so right. Nothing changes. If action and effort is not put, your business will remain at the last level of your obedience. Your company will remain at the last level of your diligence. Your mind will remain at the last level of your study. The anointing upon your life will remain at the last level of your press and sacrifice. Your prayer life will remain at the last level of your exercising your senses spiritually. Please hear me. Even if you are Esther, while you wait for Ahasuerus, use the oil. Don't sit back there. Esther was not sitting. Every day the oil was coming upon her. You may not have the money to start the company, but go online and buy the books. Listen to teachings 
by people with results, provable results. You are trusting God for ministry. Ministry is grounded for you. It is not growing. You are a sincere person, but nobody is placing a demand on the grace of God upon your life. Stop giving flimsy excuses around. It is not tribe. It is not region. It's not where your church is located. No. Where the carcasses are. There the eagles will gather. Stop giving excuses. It's because I am this. That's why I'm not promoted. I'm lifted in office. Take responsibility. Lord, there is something I have not done with the grace you gave me. Remember the wife of the son of the prophets. That oil has been in your house for a long time. The oil kept speaking since last year. Will you leave me like this? Businessman, do you know what I can do? Do you know what the grace of God can do? Man of God, do you know what the grace of God can do? Prophet, apostle, do you know what the grace of God can do? The injection contains in it a liquid that goes into your system and corrects what is wrong. But the injection will not bring itself into your system. The doctor calls you. Designed in that liquid is the entire, the, the injection has already been programmed to work in your body. But are you willing to endure the pain? There are injections that are painful. And yet that's the price for the healing you are looking for. So you compare the one minute pain to the years of misery. And you can stand and say, doctor, I am willing. And he gives you the pain. You may feel the pain, but you are not conscious of that injection. You are conscious of what happens to you. And as soon as it is administered, two days, three days, you are running around like you were never sick. Or you can refuse and remain there. And say, I want drugs. But the drugs are given to you. You will have to go through the discipline of swallowing it per time required. And whilst you are swallowing it, complaining, but you are still active. The body does not care that you are complaining. Just keep doing what brings health. And the body will be healthy. Can I tell you this? Brothers and sisters, I do not promise you. The grace of God and faith in God does not necessarily make all things easy. It makes them possible. I'm not going to promise you that just because the grace of God is upon your life, you may not need to cry. I'll be lying to you. There are some of you, the journey you are beginning from tonight, it will be a journey of tears. But while you cry, don't stop. While you weep, don't stop. Was it not because they wanted to go to the other side. Help them please. We are praying. Just help those under the anointing. It says where we meet with you is too small. Let us go beyond the Jordan. It was their instinct for increase that brought that guy in trouble. I innocently wanted to fell a tree to build a bigger place. Alas, master, it was borrowed. He said, fine rest. There is a grace for restoration. But you have an effort. Point to me where it fell. I'm not just going to bring it out, just point it. And he said, well, I may not have the power to make it float, but prophet, I can show you where it is. And he threw a stick and it began to float. Are you ready to pray? In one minute, I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. Lord, the grace to begin to take radical actions of obedience towards my destiny. Radical actions of obedience as proof that I believe your grace and as proof that I am maximizing that grace. Please go ahead and pray. Radical actions of obedience. Obedience in study. Obedience in mentorship. Obedience in prayer. Obedience in speaking, finding out the conditions that my results depend on and working in keeping with those conditions. Please pray. There is a grace for speed. 
there is a grace for performance there is a grace for influence and visibility there is a grace for signs and wonders there is a grace for leadership there is a grace for wealth and abundance believe me there is a grace for favor these graces are available but even if they come upon your life they don't produce results automatically they enable you to do they enable you to act they enable you to act they empower you please pray hallelujah last prayer point tonight second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 mighty god someone's life is changing second corinthians help us medium second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 please read with me believers one two read and god is able to make stop god has an ability he can coordinate the grace for favor join it with the grace for wisdom join it with the grace for speed the grace for restoration bringing grace is not your assignment god is able to make all grace abound towards you and now when you partner with that grace through diligence and obedience you will always having all sufficiency in how many things by these results you will abound to every good work god supplies the grace you take advantage of the grace through faith and now that grace empowers you empowers your mind your body your spirit your will and pushes you to walk in keeping with the conditions that make for the promise the condition that makes for the results that you seek and inevitably the bible says if you live like this you say are you ready to pray father every grace that i need in this season every dimension of grace and if you know a particular dimension of grace that you are seeking passionately lift your voice and pray the bible says it comes from god God is able to make all grace abound towards you. The grace for prosperity, the grace for passion and hunger for the things of God. The grace for prayer and supplication, the grace for revelation, the grace for influence, the grace for signs and wonders, the grace for favor, attracting to your life helpers of destiny. All of these graces are for your taking but you must pray that God sends them and pray that you will maximize them Lord I will not waste your grace through ignorance I will not waste your grace through idleness I will not waste your grace through carelessness I release my faith and I take advantage of that grace hallelujah praise the name of the Lord before I speak over your life for tonight I want to invite very quickly I've, I've preached about grace there are people here scattered within this auditorium please no movement let's respect the altar call those outside all the overflows down to the basement and there are people following from nations continents territories you have heard the word the grace that saves right now is within reach but it will only profit you if you are able to take that step and stand as one who is in need of that grace the bible says whosoever comes to him he will in no wise cast away i'm going to make an altar call for two groups of people very quickly number one those who are saying apostle i've given up 
I'm, I'm tired of living my life my own way. I want Jesus. I need him desperately. And number two, there are those who are saying, I want restoration. I want to rededicate my life. If you are here, I'm going to count one to three because of our time. Please boldly, unashamedly, I'd like you to leave your seat and come and stand here. Remember that the grace is only activated when we take those steps of faith. An instruction has been given by the Spirit. Celebrate them as they come. I begin to count now. One. Two. Come to Jesus. The saving grace is working in your life. No matter how far you have gone, he can give you a new beginning. Come. Come to Jesus. Koinonia, celebrate them as they come. This is the grace of God. This is what the grace of God can do when we participate with that grace. All those at the overflows, just move to your projector screens. Following online, be ready to make that prayer. Are you still clapping? Watch what the grace of God can do. For as long as they are seated, it will look like grace is not working. But when you begin to take action, then you see the grace work. Now I'm forever grateful that you have been faithful to me, God. For your amazing grace. I salute every one of you, my dear brothers and sisters, for making this noble decision. Just like I thought, you have partnered with God's grace. Now you have done your own part by coming. There's only one more step left. The prayer of salvation to repeat after me. Then the giver of grace will bring you away his life and that life becomes yours at the instance of your faith demonstrated in and through your coming and your confession some of you are crying don't be afraid and don't be ashamed this is a family of faith we are recipients of God's grace are you ready to pray please lift your right hand before Jesus whose office grace is administered in this kingdom, we never partake of grace outside of the office of the Christ. He is the epicenter of grace. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now. everyone here in front of me and those at the overflows the basement outside following online please repeat after me very loud and let it be from the depth of your heart knowing that Jesus is here and he's listening to you the grace that saves has brought you and is ready to administer salvation say Lord Jesus one more time say Lord Jesus I believe in your word I believe in your grace tonight I have heard that your grace can save so I come to you just as I am I ask you to forgive my sins I ask you tonight to be my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that I am a recipient of eternal life. I declare that I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. I declare that my sins are forgiven. The power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken from my life. From today, I go forward ever and backward never. Amen and hallelujah. Keep your hands lifted. Father, the Bible declares 
that whoever will come to him you will in no wise cast away these ones have come I pray by the authority of scripture I declare that your sins are forgiven from today even by the authority of scripture it says therefore if any man is in Christ he's a new creature all things have gone behold all things become new I declare that you start afresh with the Lord from today I declare that the power of Satan, sin, hell, and the grave is broken from your life. Yes. You are members of the fold of faith, blood-washed recipients of eternal life. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit. That in the name of Jesus, by the twofold ministry of the word and the spirit, you will grow in grace. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. From tonight... You are victorious. You go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you and a big congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Now, I want you to follow the counselors. They are waving their hands and waving a placard. Please, all of you in concert, just follow them for a minute or two. They'll just appraise you on a few things, have your details, and you'll be back to your seat. Koinonia, are you celebrating salvation? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, whilst they are outside, I want to speak over your life. Now that you know what to do with grace, it is now profitable to speak those dimensions of graces as a priestly blessing over your life. So that when you receive it, you know how to run with it. In the name that is above all names, I declare every grace that you have seen at work in this house and you desire to walk in your life, I declare over you, may that grace come upon you now. Receive the grace for extraordinary wisdom. The grace for revelation. The grace for influence and visibility. The grace for prayer. The grace for passion and encounters with God. The grace for abundance and prosperity. The grace for favor. May it come upon you. The grace that attracts the ministry of men. May that grace come upon you. By this grace, nothing dies in your hands. By this grace, rise from glory to glory. Hear me. May this grace bring strange ideas and strategies to your mind. That from tonight, as you walk out of any of these doors, you walk conscious of the fact that I am full of God's grace. Never will you think you are empty again never will you think you are without support and assistance by this grace may God give jobs by this grace may God give children by this grace may God bring settlements by this grace may God bring wealth and abundance by this grace may God bring liftings by this grace may God bring spiritual acceleration In the name of Jesus Christ for some of you as you take actions of faith you will be surprised that between now and next week it, 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 you will want to come and testify in a hurry that doors just began to open as you were acting on the world and can I pray for you everything that has fought the expression of God's grace upon your life whether it is human demonic or institutional I stand by the God of heaven and I declare this is the week it clears the way for you every Red Sea that stops you from advancing hear the word of the Lord Koinonia Global go forward go forward by the grace of God go forward by the faith that activates grace go forward in the name of Jesus Christ
and everything you need to do to cooperate with this grace that you are not aware of may the spirit of revelation bring that knowledge to you every step of obedience you need to take today tomorrow next tomorrow that will accelerate your results spiritually and otherwise may the knowledge on what to do come to you now for some of you like daniel it will come as you understand by books receive it in jesus name for some of you the lord will send his angel to come and reveal to you like he did to daniel for some of you in dreams and visions like he showed peter god will reveal to you what to do but in any case when you find what to do the grace to do it receive it now hallelujah wave your hands and give jesus praise for tonight we bless you lord because you are holy we thank you because you are faithful let there be a performance from this understanding let our lives command fearful kingdom results to the glory of the name of the lord may we mentor nations by the results that come out of this understanding may they know jesus through our lives may they know jesus through our results hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you